Hey guys, so welcome back to Wild and Basic. It's definitely been a minute since I did the newer episodes. I think this past few weeks it's been like archive episodes, which some of them are actually like I forgot that I even like talked about them, but it's good to show some love to them and find like some new audience to it. But I am very happy to make new episodes and come back to this. So I honestly wish that like today's topic was more on like a happier note. I mean, I'm definitely going to try to make it like happier, I guess. I don't know. I just feel like I am in one of those like depressive episodes and sometimes honestly I don't want to make episodes or I don't even want to do any or make any content when I'm feeling like that. But I think it's also important to show like people the real things that I guess every creator goes through. It's not just just rose colored glasses. It's there's more to it. There are other things that are going on. And uh hence today's topic is burnout. I have definitely talked about this before, but that was probably I think at least at least two years ago. I can't speak. I was like, loose. <laughs> At least two years ago. So it has been a minute. And I think I learned quite a bit like two, from two years ago versus now. And um, I don't know, I just feel like there are a few things that I can definitely share from that. But um, also if you feel like <laughs> my voice sounds a little bit different, it's because I got a cold. Um, so that's that's what like my sound my voice sounds like. I hope it's it doesn't sound as terrible as I feel because I do feel <laughs> horrible. Um, it's like it goes up and down. Like I feel fine one hour or I feel fine like certain type of the time of the day then rest of it I just like I wanna crawl up into bed and don't do anything. Uh, yeah, just very relevant, but just letting you guys know, <laughs> it's it's a tough season. Anyway, so I think like last episode that I recorded the video version, I talked about travel blues and I did like, wanted to be as honest as I can. And this one, I think there's, I mean, there's some correlation to it for sure. Uh, from traveling because I, th I think one thing I realized more from traveling at least I realized before it helped me like I don't know like find fresh perspective on things overall and as a creator traveling helps a lot in that aspect because I think you get to I don't know like experience new things or sometimes see new things or I don't know, like have some fresh new ideas and that kind of connects me to my first point when it comes to burnout is exhaustion and it's about, it's more like creative exhaustion. This is, I, I'm pretty sure some people experience this depending on I guess like the career that you're at, like if you're in marketing or I don't know, you're a creative designer or like content creator. Um, there are like so many, if you're in a creative field, like you're definitely going to experience this. But I think as a creative, uh, as a content creator, you definitely experience this more because I think like more and more, sometimes you get to a point that you are like, oh yeah, like I have creative ideas and you're doing them. Then after a while you're like, I don't know like what else is there for me to do like what else is there for me to make like is there anything else there that I haven't talked about or I haven't done and okay I'm not saying that I am the person that I have done everything I could but I think there's only so much you could do at a capacity as a creator there is, obviously if you're a bigger creator, you definitely have more flexibility, you have staff and like, not just staff, you have even like 
you can hire out agencies. It's a completely different story. But when you're a small creator, or even in this economy, I know even some bigger creators that has millions of subscribers, they don't even hire out. So there's a lot more pressure on just you. Like you are the only one making your own content. It like it's hard to just be like, how can I be more creative? How can I do more? And that's why sometimes you just stuck at this phase of like, how can I be more creative? Like, how can I make something new? Like, or how can I introduce something that's the same thing, but in a new format? You know, it's like, let's just say you're talking about this new product and it's nothing like extraordinary product, but it's a new product. You're like, how can I spin this in a way that, I don't know, like people are, people get excited about. Like, how can I make this sound so exciting that people want to click on it and people will just want to watch it? Like, people want to see it. You know what I mean? Especially, this is something I've noticed. It's a double-edged sword, and many people have mentioned this, but I'm, at the same time, I'm just like so over it at this point. Like, honestly, so over it. Uh, you know, like how people say, oh, you should have a niche. Like, you should have a very specific niche. Fashion, lifestyle, and not just fashion, but this still like, you know, you need to be more specific, I guess, like, I don't know, like street fashion, or I don't know, like high fashion, like stuff like that. Or are you just skincare or are you makeup, you know, like very specific niche. Then it comes to stuff like that, especially if you're in that niche, yes, there is obviously more chance for growth because you can make so many videos that are niche based and that could get you to a point. But I think what happens afterwards is like once you gain some momentum, then you're like, okay, what do I do? Like. No, seriously, what do I do? Like, how many times can you say that, like, this is my skincare routine? Like, how many times can you introduce a new skincare routine? Yes, you can. I think the great thing about, like, you can always try new products. That is for sure. But I think that also sometimes gets old because there's so many, there's only so many ways that you can introduce a product, unless that product has its own unique features or something unique to offer. And it's very rare, <laughs> it really is rare. So I'm just saying like, it's very difficult. Like you can only mention so many times that like how great the moisturizer is or how good the moisturizer is. Yes, you might have one good moisturizer that you use and you love it, but you cannot make a content about that moisturizer over and over and over again. It's just at one point you're gonna hit the wall and you're like, okay, I'm out of fresh ideas. Like I genuinely don't know what to do. Like that's just it. Um, this pro this connects me to my next point. It it's about the pressure to perform. There are many times, I think, obviously maybe it might be different for other careers too, but I think with content creation, it's all about like, yes, you can have a great content, your content looks great, your video is great, like it's edited well, filtered, like it's not like, like filtered, I don't mean like in a bad way, but like it's curated, it's like edited well, like it looks good then you have to worry about like how it performs. I'm not even talking about like ad versus not ad. I'm just talking about like content overall. Sometimes I think we spend so much effort to create the content, then it flops, like it doesn't do well. Like very honest story. I'm not sure if it is just me, but lately YouTube has been it's been bad. Like, the views on YouTube has been, like, down. Like, really, really bad. Like, it used to be, I don't know, like, really, you would get, like, a lot of views. Or, like, I don't know, you would show up more on search and, like, uh, then they keep saying, like, oh, yeah, use the shorts. And, like, even YouTube shorts is, like, getting on my nerves. Uh, maybe this is just me, I don't know. 
but I'm just saying like yes you're not supposed to kind of like measure yourself with those things like the performance but as a creator obviously that's a big thing because nine out of ten when you work with a client or when you're working with a brand after you do the uh, collaboration they're gonna ask you for your analytics they're like give me the impressions I'm putting a report or give me this give me that so obviously it makes sense and there's this awful feature the thing is I see the point it's like why they made that feature and why it might be useful but it's also a horrible feature because it makes you feel so shit about yourself uh, there is this feature on YouTube Studio, and if you're not familiar with it, I would definitely recommend going checking it out. So, whenever you post a content, like especially a new video or something, YouTube will analyze within the first hour or so and see how it is performing against your previous videos that was posted before. Um, for shorts, it only compares it with the other shorts not like real actual videos, I mean long form videos and for long form videos it performs like the it, it, it compares against the other uh, long, uh, long form videos so it's very similar it has to be like similar content, that's what I mean so it, it cannot be like different so when you look at them and like it gives you like a number like 1 to 10, that's the scale I guess and like one being like it's doing so well like you're you're killing it 10 being the worst uh lately <laughs> everything i've been posting on my youtube has been 10 yeah it has been 9 maybe one time it was 8 when i first posted then it went down to 9 now it's 10 like i see what is the word for it? Like, I see the meaning behind it, that's for sure. Like, oh, yeah, like, essentially saying that your content sucks. Valid argument. Like, I get that. But I think, at the same time, it also affects you as a creator. You're like, well, I worked on this content, and I thought it's going to do well. And some of the content, I feel like you can never predict, because there are many times... I have made content that performed horribly at first, but then months or two after, it started picking up on search or something, then it did well. It's very unpredictable, but I, what I'm just trying to come up is that like performance, or, uh, like, or just uh, seeing that your performance, uh, it affects you a lot. Then it makes you question your craft. Then you're like, what am I doing this for? Is it worth it for me to try? Should I keep going? Like, there are lots of questions that comes to your head. It's obviously, it, it's, it's honestly, yeah, that's the thing. Like, sometimes I don't care for it if I really, really like my content. And I think it's sometimes also like, and I even look at some of the creators too, it's like, I don't think we expect that like, oh my god, we're gonna get so many views for one video. But I think sometimes for the video that we spend so much effort or maybe we like it so much, we expect it to perform okay. But sometimes it performs like horrible. Like horribly. Like so, so bad. Like worse than usual. And that's when you start to question your craft and you're like... Um, like, what did I do? Like, am I on the wrong path? Like, what is exactly going on? One thing. And this leads me to my next point. Questioning your craft that comes to self-doubt. Then you start to compare yourself. Comparison is awful. In, at some capacity, I think we always compare ourselves. But I think sometimes... Uh, I feel like our battery, like, we only, we only have so much to give sometimes and we have to recharge our battery then come back and do, do this again. I, I think like for corporate or different jobs, it's 
obviously a different story because I think you work, then all of a sudden, like, you know, after a while you take your vacation, then you come back, you know, that's kind of it. But I think as a creator, you work pretty much all the time. And I'm not trying to say this in a bad, like that, like it's a bad thing. Um, but it's like, you're working most of the time. You don't necessarily have like off hours. And then when you even go on a vacation, you try to make content out of that because if you've gone somewhere and that's nice, you know, you're like, oh, that's gonna get clicks, that's gonna get views. So obviously you wanna make content out of that. Or even when you're moving, you know, you're like, Oh, like moving content does so well. So that I'm just saying, like obviously you're not gonna miss that opportunity. Or like when you get something new, or when you you're doing something new. Obviously, there's a, almost every other opportunity. There's always a chance for content. So it is sometimes so hard to just turn that off, or turn that mindset off, so that you can do something for yourself without thinking about content. Today's episode is brought to you by Liquid IV. Liquid IV is a category-winning hydration brand fueling your well-being, and their hydration multiplier is the one product you're missing in your daily routine. In just one stick, you get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than water alone. Use it first thing in the morning, before a workout, or when you just feel run down, After a long night out, especially after like a lot of alcohol intake, and also on just long flights. I love that it comes in individual packets so you can take it wherever with you and easily just mix it in your water. I keep one in my car, well actually a couple in my car, one in my backpack, one in my like travel bag so I never run out. Liquid IV partners with leading organizations for innovative solutions to help communities to protect both their water and their futures. To this date, Liquid IV has donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. Get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code WB at checkout. That is 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code WB at liquidiv.com. It's just so hard to not think about content sometimes because as much as we say it, and I think you can go for a certain amount of time not like making content or just like not posting anything on social media, but that's just not always smart. Even as an established creator, that's what I have noticed. That like, yes, you can, you could have like millions of followers or you could have very engaged audience, but less you start posting, uh, less connected you are with your audience, then you start to lose that momentum. And once you start to lose that momentum, yes, you can get it back and I'm sure you're going to have some loyal fans loyal people, loyal followers that you have that are always going to find your content, like your content, comment it, but it is tricky. It's very tricky. So you, that's what I'm saying. It's very similar, like how celebrities, you know, like once they have, have movies at the time, like they do PR and everything. And if you don't do anything at that time or don't release something at that time, later on, it's just kind of irrelevant. People are like, okay, who cares? Right. It's, it's similar in that aspect that like you kind of have to use that momentum for yourself. That's why it's sometimes super hard to just be like not, I don't know, like not do anything or not post anything. So you constantly have to like use your brain for new ideas, for new content. And that's why I say that like it's very hard to just not think about it and be like, oh, like, do I make a content of this? Do I not make a content of this? And that brings me to my next point that like uh, being always connected. And that's almost like, I think I have used this in my previous episode when I was talking about this. It's like, it's like being on a hamster wheel. Um, it's just, you're constantly going. Uh, and this do- there's no end on sight. You're just constantly working 
uh, it's just the wheel is constantly going. Like there's just nowhere. You just don't know when it's going to end. And I, I, I know that I, I don't say this in a bad way because I think it's, it might sound like ungrateful. Like I love my career. <laughs> I love what I do. I love using social media. I love posting on social media. I love working with brands. But I think there is a point that happens. This happens. And this can happen more than once. And I think this is why I say this is like I think once you start to have this as a career for an extended period of time, especially after a few years, probably I, I feel like year three or something, you're gonna feel it. Three, four, I don't know, it depends. Maybe some people feel it earlier. Because I remember at first I felt it on my year three. Now I think I'm in my sixth year? Is it the sixth year or something? Yeah, I think it's been like, hold on, I'm trying to think of like, it's three, three, yeah, it's my sixth year. So I'm definitely feeling it again. I think it goes up and down for sure, but I'm just saying like, once you have this career for a long period of time, you're going to have these kind of feelings. And that's not just, just to say that like, you don't love your career, you don't love what you do, but I think that just shows that sometimes what I'm trying to say here is like you, you burned out. It doesn't mean you're lazy. I think there's definitely a bigger difference between being lazy and burned out. And there was this episode I think Emma Chamberlain made about like what's like the difference between burnout and lazy. And I think that's like very, very different. And I don't necessarily want to be like, that's what it is. If you do want to listen to that, she explains it so well in there. But that's not what this episode is about. But what I try to say is that like I think this is more about like sometimes it's just like you have nothing else to give at that time, which is okay. I think that just shows that you need to take a break. You need to focus on yourself for a bit and see what else you can do. And that's what I see sometimes, or at least at this stage of my like career right now. But like I feel like I was feeling so inspired in the beginning of the year and even maybe like towards like the summer I was fine. Then after the summer, I think things have been not slowing down per se career wise, but I think content wise I'm just like not super excited about making new things and I'm just like, oh like I, I, I don't know what more that I could give that my audience is excited about or also I'm excited about you know that I can talk about that's what I'm saying it's very very tricky honestly it's a very difficult question to answer sometimes I feel like there are certain things that I post and I'm like I think people are gonna be excited sometimes they they get excited sometimes they don't so and that's what I'm saying it's very hard to make that balance between like oh like I won't my followers to be excited about what I'm posting but I also want to enjoy myself too like by posting what I want to post it's very difficult at this stage after a while and that's what you uh, what I try to figure out these days that I'm like I really want to make sure I'm here for myself but I'm also here for the audience that I have established and those audience that I'm trying to uh, grow it is tricky. It is very, very tricky. And I think uh, back to what I was just mentioning is like, that's why a lot of this is con connected as performance. And burnout happens a lot, usually from my experience, is a time when my content starts to not perform as what I was expecting, or sometimes it even performs worse than I was expecting it. And that's when it starts to like makes me question because usually I just this is at least it's just me. Usually when my content does well, or most of the time it's like performing well, I I don't feel as burnt out because I'm like oh like that's fine like I'm posting this everything is doing well like it's going well this is great. But then I think when I try new things or don't even try new things but. I post what I was thinking posting 
then it performs poorly, that's when I'm like, oh, what's going on? And usually I would say this too also, like it's not just like one video or one picture that is like performing bad. Sometimes it's like group of pictures, group of videos that is performing poorly that I'm just like, oh, like something is wrong. Uh, what is going on, right? Like that is what it's like. I'm like, I need to change something, or do I need to keep going? Maybe it's just the time of the time. It's the time of the year or something. That's what I'm saying. There's so many factors that associate with that, but this also shows that sometimes I think it is so difficult <laughs> to give that. Be like, oh, I'm not burned out. Like have that mindset, be like, no, I can, like, I'm okay, like, I, uh, I'm putting another video, like, another one, another one. Sometimes you're just like, no, like, put that down and don't make content. <laughs> like, this is what I have noticed to solution to some of the burnout is that, like, yes, we say recycling content is not necessarily a good idea, but more and more I realized recycling older content that you're so proud about, or you're so proud about, you're so proud of, <laughs> is really, really good for you actually, because most of the time, actually, your audience is not going to remember what you have posted before, unless it's like very, like recently, like that you posted and you're posting it again. But if it's like from a year ago or two years ago, no one's gonna remember that. So you can definitely repost that while you're recharging and thinking about what you're gonna do next. I have noticed that, that like that's actually a good thing to like go back to those content because maybe that content will help you, I don't know, recharge or help you find a new perspective uh, while you think about all the ways that you can improve or you can do better. Because burnout is so hard because that sometimes there's no solution. There's literally no nothing you could do but wait it out and take time for yourself and just be like, okay, I need to sit down and think about what is something that inspires me today that I can focus on it more and create more content for it. Super tricky, very, very tricky. And that's why I say that I'm like, it sounds sometimes like, oh, you're just being lazy, but it's, like, it's not about that. Sometimes I, you're, you look at it and you're like, I made a content about that. I talked about this. I talked about this. I talk about, talked about that. Like, what else is there that I can talk about that is not the same thing that I talked about or that's not the same thing I created? It's very, very tricky. <laughs> very, very tricky. And that's why I'm saying that that's why it sometimes connects to multiple factors that, like, you're like, I don't know if there is more for me to give anymore or at, the, at this stage. And that's why, like, I think I see most of the creators these days or the taking a break and stuff. Like, for example, I mentioned Emma Chamberlain, right? She had the podcast. Well, she still has podcasts. I mean, anything goes podcast, right? But she had her YouTube channel. And she used to post on, like, she started with YouTube. And she used to post on YouTube all the time. Then she took a break, she came back, but now she doesn't post anymore. I think she posts like once in a while, but she never, she doesn't post like as she used to. It's very different because she realized, because she was posting vlogs most of the time and that's, that was her content, like get ready with me, not get ready with me, I mean it's not Alex Earl, but like going to the grocery store, going to Whole Foods and pick up, picking up something, going to the thrift store, you know, like her daily life. Yes. It sounds like fun and it sounds like you can do this all the time but I think at one point she realized like how many times can I go to the grocery store how many times can I go to the thrift store and pick out an outfit and show them the haul and that's it or like make food or like do something like or make coffee like how many times can I do this how many times can I show that like I am um, not sleeping until 2 a.m. or something and like showing them what I'm doing all entire night? Like, what can you do? You know, like, it is very, very difficult. And that is something is like also like very 
easy to do because it's vlogs, it's your life. Comparing to like if it is like a certain topic like cos uh, cosmetics or like fashion, it's very tricky. Very, very tricky because there's only so much you could show. There's only so much you could do with fashion or with cosmetics or with skincare or like Miss Finance, like, unless there's something new popping up. That's what I'm saying, like, you cannot always make new content. And I realize why she left it. I really do. I mean, yes, she had the big audience, but she transferred most of it from to, from her YouTube to her, uh, as, like, to her podcast. I'm sure that's why she has so many podcast listeners, and, like, she got Spotify. There are, like, many other ones I know, like Shane Mitchell, like, the... Um, girl from Pretty Little Liars, like the um, Emily from Pretty Little Liars, she had a big YouTube channel. She moved on from it too. Like now she's uh, she's mostly on YouTube. I mean, on Instagram and she has TikTok too. I think things have changed. Format has changed. That is for sure. But I think also people have realized that they do need to take break for themselves and like change for themselves, I guess, <laughs> understand what works for them better, I guess. And that's what I'm understanding so far, and that's why I'm trying to come at this, like, I think, yes, um, as I love creating content, I love making videos, but sometimes it gets to a point that you're like, I don't know what else is there for me to give. And I'm, that's why I feel like sometimes I wanna, I don't post for a bit, because I wanna recalibrate, <laughs> try to figure out what I can post next, what is something I can do that can inspire me or find that inspiration again so I can post. Like, that is honestly the point. That's why I understand, like, why people burn out so quickly, uh, especially on TikTok as well, because it's very tricky to just, like, post new videos every day. <laughs> Unless, it's, like, it's not just lip syncing, you know what I mean? You can definitely do lip syncing every single day, but at one point, it's just like, you hit a wall. That's the same thing with everything. It's like, at one point, you hit a wall and you're like, I'm lost. And I hope this made sense. Like, that's why I'm at right this moment. And I wanted to make this uh, video not to, like, discourage people to, like, not make a content or not continue their life. But just to show that, like, this happens, you know? It's not like... Oh, like you're gonna be inspired every day or you're gonna be like wanting to do what you want to do every day sometimes you do need to take a step back I don't know look at like the whole picture and just be like oh like this is what's working and it's not working or maybe it's not working right now but it's gonna work in the future that's what I think about sometimes because there are many things that I did it didn't pay off in the beginning but six months down the line, it started working out for me. Very tricky, I know, but that's why you have to take risks. But when it comes to burnout, I'm realizing that the best thing you could do is to take the moment and see what is something that could work out for you. Anyways, guys, so I hope you guys like this episode. If you do, please don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next week with another video.